All right, so now you have an understanding of the difference between regulatory sequences and specific transcription factors, and you have an idea of some of the DNA binding domains of various specific transcription factors that exist out there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the regulation of a series of genes in E. coli, that being the LAC operon and the TRIP operon. Okay, now I'm not going to lecture on each one of these. I'm going to include the slides in Canvas, but there are some very, very good videos that already exist for each one of these that I have linked to in Canvas. Again, I will leave these slides here for you to help you out, but I do want to mention one thing specifically. That for the LAC operon, as you have uh, already watched the video, if we take a look at the LAC operon and we look at the promoter, we have a normal bacteria promoter of a negative 10 region, a negative 35 region, and that up element. But for the LAC operon, instead of having the up element, it's replaced with a cap binding site. Now remember, CAP is the protein that's active only when bound to cyclic AMP and it binds to the CAP binding site. What those videos haven't told you is that CAP binding site is um, in the same position as the up element is for other genes. Which means that if the CAP protein is not bound to the CAP binding site, the alpha carboxy terminal domain of RNA polymerase can't bind there. Let's take a look what I mean. So here, normally, remember this alpha carboxy terminal domain of the prokaryotic RNA polymerase usually binds to the up element that is usually right here. But for the lac operon, there is no up element. There's only a cap site. Okay. However, what's been found is that the cap protein's activation domain binds to the alpha carboxy terminal domain. And it's that binding that stabilizes RNA polymerase here onto the promoter and allows them for robust transcription. So that is the model that, that scientists have put forth, that it's simply acting as another sticky spot, that cap recruits the carboxy terminal domain as opposed to an alternative hypothesis in that CAP is an allosteric activator of the RNA polymerase. That is not the case. And here are some experiments that support the idea that it's not allostery that's occurring, it's just recruitment. That CAP activation domain sticks to the alpha carboxy terminal domain. Now the experiments that support the idea that CAP sticks to the alpha carboxy terminal domain and is not an allosteric activator of it, are using what are called activator bypass experiments. Okay, and again, this is experimental support of the recruitment model. The first thing they did is they said, all right, if it's true, if the cap protein, all it's doing is sticking to the alpha carboxy terminal domain, then what we should do is we should be able to replace both of those components with two other things that stick together and it should still work. So they genetically engineered an RNA polymerase that instead of having the alpha carboxy terminal domain, it has protein X. And then they took and replaced cap by another protein that they know sticks to X. So X and Y they know interact with each other. And they replace the cap binding site with a new DNA binding site that Y binds to. So they've completely ripped out all of this stuff, replaced it with stuff that they know that the interaction is nothing more than sticking together and no allosteres is involved. And they said, okay, does this work? And sure enough, it does. Then they've done something different. They said, all right, well, if the alpha, the only reason for cap is to stick to the alpha carboxy terminal domain, then let's do this. Let's just replace the alpha carboxy terminal domain with the DNA binding domain of the cap protein, 
leave the cap site there and delete the cap protein altogether from the cell. Does that work? Yes, it does. So these two experiments then, these activator bypass experiments, where they're, they're getting rid of the activator, they're getting vid, rid of the cap binding protein, and showing that when they engineer these systems, that LAC-Z is still expressed. This supports the idea that all that CAP is doing is acting for acting as a third sticky site. Here's one sticky site at minus 10, another sticky site at minus 35, the third sticky site right here at the CAP protein.